Hello again. In the last video we were talking about lasers and the last thing that we were talking about was stimulated emission. Uh, so we have a photon incident on an atom. Uh, this atom absorbs uh, the photon, raises trans transitions to a, to a higher energy level, which corresponds exactly to the energy of that photon. Um, 10 to the minus 8 seconds later, a very short time later, uh, that same atom uh, transitions to a lower energy state or the ground state and emits a photon by the conservation of energy. Uh, we're talking about with lasers stimulated emission. We have a we have a photon incident on an atom that is in a metastable state um, that uh, stimulates that atom to emit a photon. But of course we have this this extra photon here. So we have not only do we have a transition to the ground state and thereby uh, procuring a, a photon, we had this incident photon which must be emitted. And those two photons are in phase and they're exactly the same energy as the original photon. So, uh, we were talking about neon though, and uh, going on, we, we had a, an energy level diagram of the neon before. I'll draw it a little bit bigger this time. Uh, and we have a, a collision. Uh, this first transition I'm going to talk about was remember a collision from the helium atom, which is why the helium's there in the first place. Uh, we can get that neon to this metastable state. So this is our neon. Uh, this is a metastable state here. And when that neon, so that's a relatively long lived state, and it's a long lived state for a reason. I'll get to that in a second. When the neon drops down to its ground state, uh, it can it can actually transition to this to this in between state here first and emit a photon of approximately well that e that energy level that energy transition cor corresponds to 1.96 eV. Uh, it would continue on and and transition to the ground state, um, but we're particularly interested in this transition here from the metastable state. Uh, to this to this excited state still um, not the ground state transition so uh, of course in the gain medium in the laser cavity we have the two gases we have other neon atoms and some of those neon atoms will already be in the metastable state this is our metastable state And if they are, this incident photon uh, can cause a transition by stimulated emission. And hence, we have two photons liberated of exactly the same energy as the original photon and exactly the same energy as this, this transition to this excited state, so down to this excited state, uh, and this is how the laser, uh, this is how laser works basically. Um, if um, if we have more neon atoms in this metastable state in the gain medium, then we call that a, a population inversion. Uh, what colour should I do that? I'll do that in green because that's a that's a word my students need to know. Inversion. Um, so population inversion uh, means that there's more atoms in this metastable, this excited metastable state than there are in the in the E2 or the ground state. Um, okay, so 1.96 EV. Now we'll just do a quick calculation. Um, just to uh, just to show uh, how this corresponds to um, our helium neon laser uh, has a wavelength of 632.8 nanometers. 
in the red. Okay, most of us will know that already. Um, 1.96 EV to joules. I've already done this calculation. Multiplied by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 equals 3.136. We have to change it to joules first to do our calculations. Uh, we can't do our calculations in electron volts, of course. Uh, this is just the electron charge in coulombs. Um, e equals HF. Uh, therefore, F equals E on H. Planck's constant. Three point one three six by ten to the minus nineteen joules over Planck's constant uh, four point seven three by ten to the fourteen hertz. This frequency, of course, is uh, is is going to correspond to a a visible region. Uh, electromagnetic radiation uh, C equals F lambda comes from V equals F lambda we were talking about light so light is uh, travels at C um, so lambda equals C on F which equals 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second over 4.73 by 10 to the 14 Hertz uh, 6.34 by 10 to the minus 7 meters, which is uh, 634 nanometers, uh, which is in our 632.8. It's very close, of course. Um, I may not have rounded to enough significant figures uh, in order to get the exact value, but that's how you would take. Uh, a 1.96 electron volt uh, photon and and find its wavelength. So amplification now back to the top laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission uh, of radiation. We haven't talked about the ampli amplification yet. How does that happen? Well we have our laser uh, cavity. Uh, now I might put that in there, actually. Put that here somewhere. There. Okay. We have our laser cavity, and this is a mirrored surface. Uh, so oh, I'll do that amplification. Uh, so that's a mirror. Oops. And this is a I'm running out of time. This is another mirror. So we have two mirrors. This uh, this mirror here is uh, is is fully reflective. This one is only partially reflective. And well, actually, it partially transmits light, so it's more reflective than it is uh, than it will let light through. And these these mirrors are, are perfectly parallel to each other. Okay, absolutely perfectly parallel. And the the photons that are, are bouncing around these 1.96 eV photons that are caused by stimulated emission. They're coming off of our neon atoms, of course, and they're being bounced around in this gain medium here. There's lots of them. And 
uh, we basically want to confine them to this space so that they 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 go on to excite more neon atoms. So um, remember we were talking about energy levels in the neon before, and and we want that to, that neon to 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 go on and emit more 1.96 eV photons by stimulated emission. So we can find them once this uh, once this uh, light gets intense enough. Once we've got enough photons bouncing around here, we actually have some of that intensity escape. Some of that light escapes, and and there we have our our laser. So um, mirrors are set a certain distance apart as well. This is very important. Uh, so this distance here, d. actually corresponds to uh, d equals some number, an integer, um, multiplied by uh, one half wavelength. So what happens is uh, as, these, as these photons bounce around, they bounce backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and they actually constructively interfere with each other. So um, uh, because because um, uh, because these are these mirrors are actually uh, this this distance d apart, uh, and and that d corresponds to this uh, some some integer multiple of a wavelength divided by two, we have uh, constructive interference for for these guys. Bugger. And for anything else, so we we actually have different coloured light um, created in there. There's other frequencies of light, and 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 these are these are inclined to be. Destructively interfere with each other, and so they tend to cancel each other out, leaving our uh, leaving our 632.8 uh, nanometer photons uh, to to produce our laser, and uh, this results in and what is what is a laser? It actually it it has several things. It's uh, unidirectional. It comes out in one direction. It's very, very, uh, very, very precise laser beam. Okay, and everybody will have experienced that in life. Okay, this is okay. At some point, you would have seen what a laser does. Uh, so unidirectional. You can actually shine a laser uh, and 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 have it reflect off the moon. Uh, it's high intensity. Uh, intense, uh, in, intense enough to 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 kill cells. Intense enough to cut through uh, quite strong materials. Uh, it's coherent. Uh, all of the light that comes out has has a constant phase relationship. So so why is that important? Because it doesn't destructively interfere with each other. Uh, if, the, if they have a constant phase, if the light that, that is emitted has a constant phase relationship, it doesn't destructively interfere. And and it's monochromatic. It's of one colour. Uh, and that's all. Thanks for watching.